All right, it is seven o'clock. It is Tuesday night. It is time for another weekly conversations with Commodores. I've got one of my former teammates. Well, I guess you're not a former teammate. You're always a teammate. Always a teammate. Always a teammate. Number 48, Joel Weingart. Good to see you, bud. I'm so glad yes, you're here tonight. Glad to be here. Thank you for thinking of me. Glad oh, to be on. Ab absolutely. Joel's a few years behind me uh, in recruiting classes, but we did get to hang out a bunch during the time that we were there on campus together. And you had, Joel, you had some real, real characters in your recruiting class. And I mean <laughs> that in the very best of ways. To say the least. Off the field or even on the field, although it was serious when we were practicing the games, there was always laughter. Yeah. Anytime around you, Robo, a whole bunch of those guys, there was always laughter. And that's yeah. just one of the things that I have grown uh, throughout my life. It is so vitally important to your health, your physical, yeah. your mental, your emotional health. And that's that's one of the things in such yep. a very good way that I remember about our friendship back in the day. So welcome to the show. And I'm glad you, awesome. you have some time, even though you were traveling. tonight. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Up in Boston tonight. Thank you. Very good. Very good. Well, Joel, tell folks who, who haven't been around you in a while uh, sure. a little bit about your family and, and what you're doing professionally these days. Yeah, absolutely. Well, first of all, uh, I, I um, uh, I'm in kind of a mixed marriage. My wife is a UT graduate, and uh, so I married her anyway. Uh, it must be wait. true love because to over. I know. Did she, I know. Wait, wait, wait. Did she bring mustard into the stadium last weekend? <laughs> what? <laughs> she was not at the game last weekend. So mm -hmm. yeah, that was funny though uh, to see that. Uh, it was not in a kind of in, in an embarrassing way, but. Uh, you are. Um, it was a great game, great atmosphere for them, but uh, that that did kind of ruin it, honestly. But no, she, yeah, despite the fact that she was a UT grad, um, so we've been married 25 years. We've got uh, three children. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, Grant, Callan, and Will, boy, girl, boy, um, 24, 21, and 16. Uh, all, we are uh, extremely blessed. Um you know, quite frankly, I've been extremely blessed with with the opportunities that I've been given, and and to uh, to have a uh, just an absolute. I would not trade this family for the world. Um, great people, and and uh, so yeah, really excited about the family. Um, and I work. I've been in diagnostics, uh, in vitro diagnostics, in healthcare for really over twenty years. Um, started out with companies that you may be familiar with, Abbott Laboratories of the world so in the in vitro diagnostic space you're either a manufacturer of equipment or maybe reagents that go on the, the testing that goes on the equipment um and my specific specialty has been in point of care testing and so now uh, i am the, the the commercial lead for point of care cardiac testing for north america for C siemens healthcare siemens health and ears and so uh, really excited about, about that space. Um, for those that are in healthcare, you know, anytime a patient presents to a hospital emergency room with chest pain or with signs and symptoms of a potential heart attack, uh, this, this platform will have an eight minute high sensitive troponin test that will give them, uh, help to give them insight into whether there's an ongoing MI or not. And to be able to rule in or rule out those patients, and it's 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 going to be just extremely uh, vital to to healthcare, and uh, really excited about that. And we've got probably it's not FDA approved yet. We're approved in Europe, but hoping to get FDA approval within the next twelve to eighteen months. Hmm, that could be a real game changer in hospital yeah, absolutely. Or room settings. Wow, wow. And, and Dwayne Jones says to tell you hello, and he's right. There's lots and lots of former Vanderbilt football nice. players. Who are in healthcare and healthcare sales? It really is remarkable yes. the, the number of, of, of folks who who do that. Well, yes. Joel, you weren't always in sales. In fact, you were in the hitting business for a while. Multi <laughs> multi sport athlete coming out of Ohio, yep. but I know that Vanderbilt could not or was not on your radar as a kid. Who did you yeah. who did you root for? What what schools yeah. or what pro teams? And and tell us a little bit about your background. Yeah, well, I appreciate that. So the opportunity to um, 
the one to be on. Thank you again for letting me be on and be part of this. It's it's been great to listen to uh, other folks who I went to school with or in that same era and to hear their stories and reminisce a little bit about some of the uh, you know years gone by. Um, so I, I grew up in in nor uh, northeastern Ohio near Youngstown, Akron, Canton, kind of that triangle there. Uh, so high school football was king. Of course, I know there's great high school football played all over the country, but back then it was, you know, it was really California, Texas, Florida, maybe Alabama, Georgia, Ohio, uh, Ohio football was, uh, was, was great. Of course, I grew up a big 10 fan. So I was a huge Ohio state fan, not a Michigan fan, huge Ohio state fan. And, um, really growing up through high school, I, you know, if I was going to play college, if, if I would have gotten the offer, I would have, I would have played at Ohio State. I, I, I never did. I never, yeah, I'm sorry. I never did get that, uh, that opportunity. Not that I'm bitter about it today, because quite frankly, it worked out great for me. Um, but I think had I been offered Ohio State, I probably would have been there. But one thing I did like about the process, I was recruited by Bill Schmitz. You remember Bill Schmitz back of in the course. day? Of course. Uh, and so, um, it, you know, I, I just bought into what was the thought process behind Vanderbilt and that they were building a new program. Uh, oh, by the way, you play in the SEC. Oh, by the way, you're in this great city called Nashville. And when you get on campus, it was, I, I mean, I fell in love with it. My parents fell in love with it. And my parents were, you know, I wasn't, uh, although I think all 16, 17, 18 year old kids that are good and think they're good at what they do, have the aspiration to play professional football or pro whatever sport, you know, they, you wouldn't be worth your salt if you don't think you're good enough to play. Um, but my parents were, it was about the education. This is a great place. Get your education, graduate, get your, your master's degree. And, and really not in a bad way, but take advantage of the opportunity that's given to you. And I thank them for that. I had they, you know, I was, I graduated in four years and I was, I got a, a year of my grad school paid for as part of my scholarship and, and was able to finish my master's degree at Vanderbilt. And that's because of what they helped me to realize was important. It's not just the sport. Um, quite frankly, the sport is great. And, and yeah, I, I wish I was, would have been good enough and maybe put more time into it to be good enough to play professionally, but it, that wasn't in the cards. So, yeah, we, you know, yeah. it's the vehicle, it, the sport is the vehicle that helps us to get where we're going. Absolutely. I couldn't yeah. say any better. That's exactly what it was. And, and but yeah, I was the youngest of seven kids and, and I had four older brothers and they were all athletes and played college baseball. Uh, two of them played college baseball. One played baseball and basketball. Um, people are familiar with Mount Union College in, in Ohio. Um, more recognized for football, but uh, again, great baseball school. Um, but for me, when it came to the recruiting time, I had Big Ten schools that really were were pursuing me, and and that's great because we were able to. My sophomore year, we won the state championship, got to play at Ohio State Stadium. Junior year, we we lost to Cincinnati Academy of Physical Education in the finals. Uh, but, you know, again, that program had seven, eight, nine kids that got recruited D1 scholarships. So the visibility of different programs being at these games and seeing that high level talent was, you know, I benefited from that. Oh, sure. And so I had the my final, I, I think, you know, I don't, I think it's the same today. You get five official visits. Mine were Michigan, Michigan State, West Virginia, Minnesota, and Vanderbilt. And Really, people say, I mean, I, I loved Michigan and Michigan State as far as campus and visits and the people I got to meet. But, um, you know, for me, we had kids in our program that had already gone to Michigan and already gone to Michigan State. I wanted to do my thing. And so when I got to do my recruiting visit in the middle of January, uh, <laughs> you know, in Ohio, we had six, eight inches of snow. We drove yeah. down, we get to Nashville and it's 65 degrees and beautiful and stayed at Opryland Hotel. And I was like, man, this is, this is too good to be true. Yeah. yeah. So we yeah. fell in love with it. And that's, uh, I don't want to say I, I made the decision because of weather, but uh, it didn't hurt my decision. That's for sure. Oh, certainly guys. I'm talking with Joel Weingard, who was a teammate of mine. I want to welcome a few guys. We got the sheriff 
Ed Parrish is with us. Hey, Ed, thank you for dropping in. And another fellow who I think was also recruited by Coach Schmitz back in the day, another Midwestern fella who speaks multiple languages, including Russian, his native, not quite his native language, Rob Chura is in the house. Oh, yeah, Rob Chura. That's awesome. Yeah, I guess I, 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 and as others roll in, I'll, I'll certainly mention. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so you come down, you, you visit the campus. Do you remember who your hosts were or what you guys, now the statute of limitations is passed. Yeah, uh, despite those guys, I still came to Vanderbilt, but uh, <laughs> no, that's, that's actually not true. So, so one of the guys you just interviewed not too long ago was Carl Parker. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, Carl, I came, I was a basketball player in high school. I know it doesn't look like it, but back in the day, I, there was, I could shoot anyway. Um, and so I, I came in at kind of an odd recruiting, you know, kind of a late Saturday, Sunday, Monday type deal. And um, so Carl Parker, uh, Roman, Alan Roman, mm -hmm. uh, and I believe Steve, Steve Meads was, uh, came in. He was a basketball player, too. So we kind of came in on the same trip. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, we didn't do anything too crazy, but uh, really enjoyed the guys. And, and again, um, what, a, what a wonderful campus and great group of guys. That, that team. You, know, you think about fast forward that next year. Honestly, I think that was one of the best three and eight, four, seven, four and seven teams that we've had. We were just, just missed probably every, six or every seven game. wins. I was going to say every, every game, game was competitive. Every game was back and forth. Uh, of course, you know, a lot of the guys you, you've inter interviewed, uh, Eric Joneses of the world, Carl Parkers, Boo Mitchell. Um, you know, the list goes on and on. What great guys to honestly, as a young guy coming into not really knowing, um, for me, I was actually naturally gifted athlete. I didn't really, I didn't lift weights in high school. I didn't go through, I didn't have to, I mean, I, whether that's good or bad, that's, I'm just telling the truth. That's where I was. I didn't have to do it. I was naturally gifted for, for basketball, football, baseball. Um, but what a mistake when I got to Vanderbilt, I really got to see how these guys really, the yeah. work, and the time and the effort that they put in, um, you know, Chris Gaines, uh, I, my, my, I was linebacker. Chris Gaines is, you know, you know, was, was, uh, had one of the best his, best seasons ever by any linebacker at Vanderbilt. And, and there's been some great linebackers since. Um, I really got to see how, what it takes to be a successful and not saying I am emulated that or, or, or repeated that in football, but I think in life, you get yeah. to see that work ethic and who was successful and goes on to be successful. Those were great lessons. Oh, absolutely. You can't, you can't just live on what you've done in the past. You can't just right. assume that you're going to automatically come in, whether it's a job or playing on a sports program or whatever it is that just because you, you, you've had prior, what is it? Past success is not indicative of future result. Yeah. Who, yeah. Who's your Who's your freshman roommate? Uh, da Henry David Summers the fourth. David Summers, Powder mm -hmm. Springs, Georgia. Um, it, yeah, it, David. Uh, David was a uh, was had a great freshman year as a linebacker. Yeah, I think sure he did. had an injury and and went on to uh, actually uh, d didn't finish playing football at Vanderbilt, but had a really uh, really neat freshman year and, and was, uh, I wouldn't trade that, that year for anything. Um, and did you guys live in Lupton? Live no, in Lupton? we, we were over in, uh, um, uh, Branson. Branscombe yeah. Quadrangle. Yeah, Branscombe, sorry. Branscombe yeah. Quad. Um, mm -hmm. I think David and I were there for the first semester, if not the first year. And then, then when we moved to Towers, uh, Tom Robleski, Robo and I, mm -hmm. uh, were, were roommates. Um, and, uh, you know, I couldn't, couldn't ask for a better guy to, you know, football is tough. College is tough. It's fun. And it's all that stuff too. But, but, uh, you know, him and Joel Walker and, uh, some of those guys in that class were just, uh, were great guys to go through that experience with. Well, that's, what I was going to ask you, I, I've interviewed Joel on a different program. We were talking about, uh, the pandemic and protocols and things, and he's really sure. on the front line in the Dallas Fort Worth area. Who else was in your recruiting class? Yeah, so I, I you know, that was Kevin Brothen, uh, Steve Meads, Tyler Clem, 
uh, Derek Sarter, uh, Cedric, Cedric, Cedric Moore, uh, you know, uh, uh, some, Brett some pretty, Hayes. Some pretty serious talent right there. Yeah, no, we, you know what? I, I think, uh, you know, probably not as much uh, what would have been my uh, redshirt junior year, but that, that class, their senior year, uh, ended up having one of the better years really was a Corey Harris fumble. And I love Corey Harris. I, I, I saw his, his interview as well. And I, I really honored to have played with, with Corey in practice. I thought neat guy couldn't have been happier for the career he had in, in the NFL, but Corey was, uh, you know, he was a running back for us, if you remember back in the day, right? Uh, good play defense. What? What? I think I saw his thing. He wasn't good enough to play defense or something, whatever it was. But uh, obviously, just uh, proved that coach wrong for twelve or thirteen years in the NFL. So yeah, plus a, a, a Super Bowl championship. Yeah, sure. yeah, right. Yeah. Well, Joel, who when you were growing up, yeah, and even when you got to to Vanderbilt, did you pattern your game after any particular players? You know, growing up in Ohio, I didn't. I don't know if you favored the Bengals versus the Browns. Well, maybe, maybe you stepped yeah. out and went Steelers. I don't know. Maybe oh, Lord have game. mercy! Don't don't yeah. say that, Bernard. Bern. <laughs> no, no way. No, I was a uh, good, bad, or indifferent. I was a Cleveland fan. So Cleveland Browns, Cleveland Indians, Cleveland Cavs. That was my thing. And and uh, I think today, so so much we root for. You know, these kids that grow up in a certain area and. They root for whoever's winning that year, and that's fine. That's that's cool. Yeah. But um, you know, I was a very loyal uh, uh, Browns fan. Of course, back in the day, it was the original Clay Matthews, not Clay Matthews right. Junior. Uh, uh, well, Clay Matthews the third. This was Clay Matthews, the original uh, outside linebacker for the yeah. Cleveland Browns, and, um, and, and and we got to watch the Bernie Kosar years. Kevin oh man, all those guys. Yeah. He had absolutely zero athletic ability, but was an unbelievable quarterback. Uh, he could, he could throw he the ball from be. any level. Yeah. Uh, literally sidearm. Um, you know, you, you remember the, the weird stance he would take from, from center. Because uh, yeah, he was, was so slow tremendous. getting out of the – he was oh, with the exchange. Yeah. <laughs> Slowest quarterback in the history of the NFL, not no doubt. Yeah. But was a competitor and had some great years. You think about – the the eighties into the nineties, the Browns, if it weren't for the Denver Broncos, they would have been in the Super Bowl, you know, a couple of times. Well, there is that all time top five quarterback Elway who was kind of in there. Yeah, right? he got in the way several times. Yeah. yeah. Well, speaks, well, and there was speaks. the fumble and the interception and all those things with the Browns. And Jeremiah Castile. Yeah. 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 Joel, uh, one of your uh I almost said pledge class, <laughs> your recruiting class, uh sweet Lou Woolrich. I can't oh believe my goodness! He's watching. I can't believe he's missing. The Braves are playing his Dodgers yeah. right now, and uh, he's watching us. So hey, Lou, well, let, let me say tuning. something to him. That guy right there is one of the one of the sweetest, most genuine people I've ever met. What a hard worker! Uh, ended up having uh, probably one of the best years. Would would have been his senior year, really really proud of him and, and and I'm sure I don't know exactly what he's up to these days but I will guarantee you he's put the work and the time in uh to become a heck of an employee and a heck of a, a family man uh no well, doubt he, it, it, I know you're not on Facebook but he's got uh, his pictures just just tell such a great story but I, I can't Lou I, I can't be all buddy buddy with you for the next two and a half innings but until the Braves take care of business tonight, then, then you and I can pick this back up. That's right. Uh, well, Joel, you, you get through high school, you sign, you come to campus, and, and it's the same story for almost all of us. We're big men on campus. We're the star yeah. of our little town, our, our environment, but so is everybody else in your class. Yeah. Do you have any memories of your first impressions about coming into that fall camp and meeting your two, I mean, you, yeah. meeting your new teammates and, and guys in your recruiting class. Because this, yeah. you know, this is this is way before internet and sharing. Everybody knows everybody and bringing on, you know, let's everybody knows everybody ahead of time now, but yeah. not then. No, you really didn't. You you kind of, maybe you saw some guys on the recruiting trip. And, and uh, for me, it was, it was Steve Meads. And so Steve and I, I was really the only guy I knew coming in. 
Um, and so you show up in fall camp and you get a day to maybe test out on some things and then you're right into practice, right? Um, I will say probably the most humbling experience I had was the first couple of days we put pads on. Uh, a couple of things I realized, one, I didn't do enough conditioning. <laughs> You know, we, we show up and it's mid-August with brutal temperatures. I don't think it rained for three weeks. Uh, you know, Tennessee heat versus Ohio, you know, it was brutal. Um, and, and I'm in the position group with, with Chris Gaines. And, and I will say another, another guy that I played with that, uh, um, man, that guy put the work in, weight room, uh, physical, quick, um, it made me realize right away, you know, this this isn't high school football anymore, for sure. You know, it's, it's, it's pretty serious. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 I had the pleasure, as I've said on the show, and you knew this back in the day, of uh, playing on the scout team. Oh, so yeah. who, who is staring nine feet in front of me, right <laughs> in the middle of the field? He'll Chris knock Gaines. your block off, but he'll pick you back up, tell you that was a good throw, but get back at it yeah. the next play. Yeah. Ultimate yeah. teammate. Ultimate yeah. teammate. Yeah, I think one of the things you, what, the guys that I played with, when I think about some of the linebackers, <clears throat> just in the four years that I played, let me go through the list. It's it's pretty amazing when you look back. Mm -hmm. So Chris Gaines, Damon Winston, mm -hmm. um, you know Gary Rogers, who ended up having a Shelton Quarles, mm -hmm. uh, Rod Keith. I mean, these are guys that were really good football players. And, and all, I think four of the five, or maybe all five of them went on to have some level of professional career and, and just really, really good football players. So, um, you know, as a linebacker, although I wasn't, uh, you know, wasn't an All-American by any means and, and, and struggled to con contribute even on special teams some years, but uh, what a great experience to be around guys like that. Oh, ab absolutely. Let's let's go off the field. Let's talk about some favorite things around campus, off campus, yeah. places yeah. to hang out, because there were yeah. tons of them, even though it's a small campus. We're in Nashville. Yeah. And, you know, you're not doing football 24 seven, even though it feels like it. Yeah. But you and your you and your buddies found some fun stuff to do. Well, Bernard, I hate that you point that out, but I probably do the off campus stuff a little better than most. Um yeah, so so first of all, banditos. I mean, we gotta we gotta bring up banditos. There's not That's a guy right, right across address. the street from the towers. <laughs> you couldn't get any more convenient than that. Yeah. Although sometimes I felt like playing Frogger across West End, but anyway, um, you know. Then you think about Dickie Magruder's, which I think at some point in time became, um, uh, you, you know, it was shut down for health reasons. But uh, uh, we also went to. Several of the guys, uh, Robleski Walker and some of the others, we also became friends with uh, some of the Belmont basketball players. Mm -hmm. And so uh, my girlfriend in, in college was a Belmont student. And so we got to play basketball and, and do stuff over there and do some stuff off campus that was a lot of fun. Uh, of course, Belmont, from a basketball perspective, has gone off the charts as far as what they've been able to accomplish. Back then, they were uh, NAIA. Uh, and as they transitioned to division one. So a bunch of us would go to the, the roundup, uh, a, a hole in the wall bar off of Murfreesboro Road that literally should have been condemned 20 years ago. Uh, <laughs> it actually has been condemned and torn down now, but mm -hmm. was a great place to go and hang out, throw darts, a uh, little pizza here and there. Um, yeah, those are great times. And of course, San Antonio Taco, you can't you can't have this conversation without mentioning that place for sure. Oh, ab absolutely. And and for folks who hadn't been or weren't old, weren't even born, you didn't really go downtown Nashville too yeah, much. Thank you. No. There really, it was seedy. There were bars and some strip clubs and some yeah. not so it was rough friendly places to yeah. go. Yeah, uh, you might go in the afternoon or during the middle of the day if you want to see the the river. And at that time, it wasn't anything to see, yeah. and it yeah. certainly was nothing like the adult Disney World that it has become in the yeah. last 15, 20, 20 years. Yeah, I mean, the funny thing is, I come home from these business trips. I'll come home on a Thursday or Friday, and the planes are just completely full with uh, young folks, bachelorette, bachelor parties coming to play in Nashville. And it, it's become, um, 
you know, quite a destination uh, where, where for us back in the day, I mean, yeah, there were some places right around West End and maybe you would go down there uh, occasionally on a whim, but you just, it, it wasn't really that safe either. Let's be a printer's alley back in the day was rough. That's, that's exactly right. You know, it, it, you're, you're so right about the way it is now. Usually when I come up for a ball game, we'll stay a couple of blocks, one of the hotels nearby or maybe even close to downtown. Yeah. But the, the sheer volume of people and the number of those, I don't even know what they call them. It's those pedal bars where you'll yeah. have eight to 10 people all sitting yeah. around drinking and pedaling and yeah. loud music. It's, a, it's impressive. It's amazing what you see, what you see now. And I, I don't mean to sound like the old guy in the room so we can move on yeah. to something else, but I want to welcome, let's see, we got OJ Fleming. We got Tyler Unzicker. We had a whole bunch of other folks who just kind of rolled through and I'm sorry to yeah, catch nice. who it was. Uh, but guys, I'm talking with Joel Weingart, one of the, the he came in a uh, class behind me. I was the class of 86. Uh, Joel would have come in in the fall of, of 87. Let's yeah. talk about a little bit of game uh, action. Did, do you yeah. recall getting some game action? Do you yeah. do butterflies, uh, not butterflies? What do you recall about any of that? Yeah, I, I probably uh, this season, anybody who's followed Vanderbilt this year, of course, one of the biggest things that came out was the loss to ETSU. And, and um, you know, nobody wants uh, to experience that or to go through that. But um, what would have been probably fall of 1990, first game of the year, we go down to SMU uh, to play the Mustangs in Dallas. And uh, they're coming off, I believe, two years off of the, the, uh, uh, the death penalty. And yeah. so, you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, again, we didn't have social media like you do today and, and, and that analysis, it would have been, we would have probably been, you know, 17, 20, 24 point, it would have, we would have been huge favorites yeah. and uh, we didn't play well. I don't know if you're familiar with the outcome of that, uh, Bernard, oh, yeah. but it was not good. And, um, you know, I, with Mike Gandolfo and, and I played a lot of linebacker that day and, and uh, to say that I was not prepared is an understatement. And uh, uh, it, it did not, you know, we got beat pretty, pretty handily. Uh, and so it, it kind of made that, that experience, I think is a good, you know, not all failure uh, uh, is a bad thing. I think sometimes out of those lessons, you can really learn good life lessons and preparation is key. Uh, I wasn't prepared for that. Um, the next thing is though, the next week, I don't know if people remember this, but the next week we come home and beat LSU. So, uh, you know, it's kind of like, uh, now we didn't finish that year very well and that, that year kind of fell apart. And that was obviously, I think the, the last year that, uh, coach Brown was, uh, you know, I think he was fired at the end of that year. Yeah. Um, but, but I will say this. So, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say that was the, the season, uh, the fall of 1990. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, you know, I, I, but I, I do want to say one thing about coach Brown. I, I've never, I did follow him at UAB and talk to him a few times there. And, and, you know, he obviously has his UAB group and his Tennessee, Tennessee tech. And um, I, I honestly, though, looking back, you know, would I have liked to have won more games? Would I like to have played more games? Sure. Absolutely. I wouldn't trade it for the world. I thought that guy right there is, if I had to pick a coach that I wanted my son to play for, mm -hmm. uh, quite frankly, Watson Brown, I don't know that I could pick a better guy. He was a great man. Uh, he is a great man. He was a great coach, a uh, great offensive coordinator. Office. Obviously, he proved that many, many, many times. Um, we just uh, we just didn't get it done, you know. And so, uh, obviously, you have the change of coaches coming into uh, spring of 1991. And, and Joel, for those first four years that you were on campus uh, and part of the, the program, who was your position coaches during that time period? Yeah, um, I, I've tried to forget them, uh, but I can't. You know, Doug Matthews was actually we had several, but my probably my last position coach that I had for linebackers, Bob Campilia was Campy. was. was was coach Campy was uh, was my first coach freshman year. Um, and for those uh, of you who didn't I, know coach Campy, he was a little diminutive little guy. Yeah. But big presence and knew yeah. his, he knew what he was knew doing. Knew his stuff. 
he, he was dealing with a lot of uh, uh, physical issues at that time. He had some back surgery, multiple back surgery, I believe. Was a great guy, great, great coach. Um, he only had so much to work with with me. But uh, uh, I do remember him tell, tell, telling the, uh, the equipment managers to stop giving me cutoff shirt, shirts so they wouldn't have to see my belly uh, in practice. So I appreciated him doing that. <laughs> I'm sure Kelly and Luke had, yeah. a, had fun at your expense with that. Oh, they did. Believe me. Believe me, both of them, which I really, I, I, you know, uh, Luke, I ended up, you know, getting to spend some time with Luke at different um, stages later after football. And what a great guy. And Bill Kelly, uh, the stuff Bill Kelly and Luke Wide had to put up, what those guys had to put up with um, is legendary. <laughs> Just, but let's. Let's yeah. let's be honest here. They loved every minute of it. Sure, they did. They, Kelly yeah. Kelly yeah. will be the first one to tell you he was the biggest grouse in the world. Yeah, but on the inside, and you all yeah. you knew this. He bled black, bleeds black. Yeah, he sure gold, did. But he sure did. He he loved it. He yeah. loved it. Well, but but you think about and and for all those guys that played at 86, 85, 86, 87, right before I got there, and then 87, 88. Uh, the, 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 the weight room and, the the locker rooms back then, let's be honest, th this was uh third world type stuff, rough, rough, rough. I mean, compared to what they have now, which I'm tickled to see that and they, they had the new locker room reveal this year. I mean, that's just unbelievable to see those type of things and, and, uh, really excited for the program and. And for what they, uh, you know, the recruiting opportunity that hopefully will bring for them. Did uh, I'm kind of skipping around a little bit sure. here on you, Joel? But have have you guys? Have you taken your family? Have you, I know you live in the mid state area, but do you all go to any of the ball games or other sports on campus? Yeah, historically, we've you know, as the kids were at different ages, um, we had football tickets, basketball tickets, baseball. We we go to them all um, and, and did that a lot. But as the kids have gotten older. Uh, my son is a is a uh, my youngest is a competitive travel soccer guy. So every weekend we're on the soccer field, um, if not locally, then then in Atlanta or Birmingham um, as they play a regional type schedule. And so it's become harder and harder to get to a lot of the football games. But, uh, yeah, we still try to get to a, a game or two a year in football and we'll, we'll hit a game or two in basketball and always love to go see the baseball games if we can. And they always come down. I live in Murfreesboro, so they always come down to uh, MTSU and we try to go see right. them when we can uh, at MTSU as well. Yeah, those midweek games are a lot. They can yeah. be a lot of fun because there's not big crowds. and That's right. You get, you know, such a historically great program to come to your yep. town. That's cool. Yeah, yep. a lot I'm, of fun. I'm talking with Joel Weingart as linebacker back in the mid to late 80s, played with me under Watson Brown, and then you had a fifth year yes. on, with the program. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about yep. Coach Nardo and what was the what was it like? Because you were part of that group that transitioned away from Brown and his staff yep. after four years, but now you get a whole new regiment, yep. coming, a whole new regime coming in, quite different. Than Coach Brown. Yeah, yeah, it really was. And, and uh, you know, I, I had had some back injuries earlier in my career and, and had come back my junior and senior year to play. And um, so I had my fifth year available. Uh, Watson Brown goes out, Donardo comes in. And uh, really, quite frankly, spring of 1991, for me personally, was probably the best football I've ever played. And, and nobody would see that because it was all spring practice type stuff. Uh, and coming into, I, I, you know, I don't know, you and I haven't talked about this, nor if, did you prepare me for this, but I'll just give frank discussion around that spring. I wanted to play my fifth year. Uh, I, gra I was graduating in May of 91 and we were having our spring game and we had a pregame meal before spring practice or before the spring game. And uh, there were a group of us that came up the elevator, long story short, um, Coach Gennardo uh, looked at Robleski and I and was like, hey, you guys just getting here? And we were like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, and supposedly, I, get, I guess we were a few minutes late. And, uh, you know, uh, he said, you're, you're not on the team. You're no longer part of the team. And, and uh, at that point, 
kicked Robleski and I off the team and didn't let us participate in the spring game, uh, which was honestly for me personally, it was devastating. I, I will, I'll let Robo speak for himself, but uh, it was devastating. And uh, I remember we had the game and then the following Monday, I, I'm, I'm in his office first thing. And I'm like, um, yeah, I, I don't know exactly what happened that night, but uh, what do I need to do to, to be part of this team? And uh, we put together a series of weightlifting, uh, a certain weight I had to report in on, and then times for, uh, you know, shuttle run and some of the other things. And, and so through the summer, I was there the whole summer and as they are now, and it's kind of the, the culture now is you're there, you know, it's just, you're there. And so I worked and was in the weight room at eight and I had to be 20, 225 or above. Uh, of course, early in my career, 225 wasn't a problem, but late in the career, as I, you know, as I really understood fitness and how to eat and what I was doing, it was hard to keep weight. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we get to, we get to report for fall camp. And uh, quite frankly, um, you know, this would be a conversation of coach Donardo can answer these questions for himself, but um, we report uh, long story short is he pulls me aside after the, the, the conditioning and, and says, uh, you know, I'll just speak the facts, grab your stuff, get out of the, get out of the locker room. You're no longer part of the team. And, um, so to needless to say, very difficult, uh, for a 22 year old to have something that has always been part of your life. Keep in mind, I, I, I was the youngest of seven. I was always in athletics, never not playing a sport ever. It's just what I did. And to have that overnight, not part of your life. Um, I will say the positive that I'll give Coach Donardo is I'm very, very rarely am I ever late uh, <laughs> because of that experience. So uh, now Coach Donardo, that team went on to have uh, honestly, was was I think one of the better teams in the last 25 years uh, of Vanderbilt football. I, I, they're just they were very uh, competitive. It was a very good team, um, and I'm tickled for them. I, I just, you know, quite frankly, I'd like to have been part of that, and you know, not having that opportunity. Um, I think what it does for you is you you don't take things for granted, right? Um, you know, and you. you when you have an opportunity, it's not that, uh, you know, relish in it, take advantage of it, uh, live in the moment. And uh, because you're not guaranteed that forever. So, you know, so. I, I've heard from, from several former players that Donardo treated players who weren't his players or players he wanted gone from the program. It, it wasn't that you and Robo were late being the reason, in my opinion, why he made those decisions. Yeah. He just utilized that as an excuse, yeah. but it just, you got a firsthand account of what many people who don't play sports on the collegiate yeah. level get to see it's yeah. coaches making decisions without regard for a 22 year olds yeah. welfare or. Well, I think it's, I think it's the business end of a, a, a of a, you know, maybe the nasty side of a, uh, of a of a huge business called college football, yeah. uh, Coach Donato, you know, he gets paid to come in and win some games, and and if I was a, a way to help him set the tone for for that group as they went off to two a days and 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 did their thing, then then so be it. I don't know. You'd have to ask him. I've never talked to him about it, and and quite care. Quite frankly, I don't care what what he would or wouldn't say, but. Um, I know what I did. I know where I was. And, um, you know, I felt like that opportunity was taken from me, but that's fine. You know, life, life's not fair all the time. Uh, what do you deal with that? I, it was a rough couple of days, but, you know, I think Vanderbilt did the right thing. I will say this, the Robert Vows and some of the guys were in the athletic department, um, um, you know, technically by terms of the, the athletic scholarships that were given at that time, I broke no terms of the contract. And so um, they did pay for my fifth year of, 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 of school, my, my first year of the master's degree, which I really do appreciate. And, and I, I, you know, I don't take that lightly. I think that was uh, the right thing for them to do. Um, and I, they didn't, I can tell you this, even though I wasn't allowed to be part of that football, uh, part of the, uh, you know, the locker room and part of that team, 
they didn't have a bigger fan than me. I can tell you that, that a lot of those guys were, were good friends and, and you don't spend three, four, five summers and weightlifting and running and, you know, St. Valentine's Day massacres and, and I things was, like that. I'm glad um, you brought that up. We're going to come yeah, back to that. Yeah, yeah. You don't do those type of things and, and not really want the best for that team. I, I didn't, uh, if there was a way for that team to win the national championship and Coach Donato to get fired, I would have loved to have seen that happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's, and, and, and what you're describing, I'm sure at some point, it's presented itself for you to be able to share certain parts of this, if not the whole thing with your children about those life lessons. And that's, that's one of the, the, the beautiful is not the right word, but it's one of the beautiful things about what sports and and teammates and being part of a large collective group can teach us good, bad, or indifferent. I truly think you learn more about the losses or about the setbacks than you do about the wins. And yeah. what you've just described, it, it, I'm sure it was at that time, extremely impactful, but yeah, it also yeah. sounds to your credit, you pivoted and you figured out the best way to move forward and, and have done a great, a great job with that. But Joel, I, 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 I got to bring up, we got to talk about yeah. the St. Valentine's Day yeah. massacre because <laughs> everybody remembers their portion a little bit differently. Yeah. I yeah. still don't forgive Dwayne Jones for taking the car out of neutral and putting his foot on the brakes at times. But I want your versions of what you remember about that. All I know is that parking lot, that parking garage was like 10 floors. That's all. I remember. (laughs) It really wasn't, but it felt like, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. What was it? Four floors, I think, but literally you got to that third floor and it's, it was brutal. But one thing, you know, I, I I think Robleski and I were on the same team for that. Um, What a great, what a great way to make uh, training for college football interesting and exciting. Uh, Coach Bates, Brad Bates was, uh, man, first of all, he was a great man. Uh, Let's be honest. He was a, you know, not that different in age from us at the time, really. He was a young man himself, but he was always, um, available uh, a great guy and and uh uh wanted the best for the team and, and would put us in situations hey i don't one thing i don't i, I would rather do the saint valentine's day massacre than that dang rowing machine Ooh. i'll be honest now were you on the the rowing machine competitive team that went up to ohio that would be an obvious no yeah <laughs> i didn't know <laughs> yeah. if you were part of that but yeah. pushing those cars by the time you got around to the second or third level your lungs were so brutal on fire. Brutal. It's, it's in the twenties or the teens yeah. outside it's snowing yeah. and we're in our full sweats yeah. and you're trying to beat the time of the other teams yeah. going up this parking deck with the evil Dwayne Jones. Yeah. At the I wheel. would like to see, I would like to see the final standings. I would like to see that again. Uh, just, just for kicks and giggles. Yeah. I want to say yeah. we were like third or fourth of, of all the teams. Just saying, we didn't do too bad, but it's brutal. You know, funny story, uh, Bernard. A couple of years ago, um, I'm leaving soccer practice. My son and I, and we're in Murfreesboro, we're going down the street. We see a um, one of our teammates. His dad had stalled in the middle of an intersection. Oh, no. so I pull the car over. I jump out. We go up there, and we're pushing this car. And I, we, I was so out of breath it it couldn't have been 50 yards yeah, yeah. a little bit up an incline and I, my legs were burning I was out of breath and I, first of all I was like perhaps I need to go, go get one of my cardiac tests first of all but yeah. just brutal brutal you, burn you also probably didn't realize that at the time you probably had a little PTSD going on too well that's true, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> guys I'm talking with Joel Weingart we're living some some good old days, little, little glory days from back in the, the time. But Joel, when you weren't out at Bandidos or hanging out in the towers, yeah. did you have, were there any places on campus where you could escape or like to yeah. go visit friends or hang out? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. You know, I don't know what the, I think it was called, I don't know if it's still there, the Surratt Student Center. 
Oh, yeah, it's very much yeah. still in there. You, you guys remember, of course, they had some pool. People didn't realize, but they had pool tables in there. I didn't, you know, because we didn't have a, a lot of our recreation time. You know, we were lifting weights, running, preparing. And, and you know? remember, remember this. It wasn't until the, till 1989. We didn't have a, a campus rec department, a rec center. That's that was right. being built during the first two years I was in school. And then it opened in 89. Yeah. So we didn't have our own place to go play hoops and, and do That's whatever. That's a great point. Although we did in the old, the oh, old bas- gym. The basket brawl games. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> With the track around the top, yeah. whatever that yeah. was. Yeah. yeah. Um, that was fun. And that was for me. Uh, I, you know, intramural basketball was, was, mm-hmm. uh, was always a lot of fun. I, I got to play um you know with several of the several of the coaches coach Bates uh yeah. um, you know a lot of fun a lot of fun playing basketball over the years at Vanderbilt for sure and and did you get to play at Memorial as well oh absolutely yeah, yeah. oh that, yeah that, that was it, the best yeah that, that was, was the best. best yeah no doubt no doubt yeah and actually you know uh, you know I know the of course a lot of the baseball players, basketball players, football players, you know, other sports, you know, they, we, we all got to know each other and, and cheer for each other. Some of the basketball years, you know, you think about Scott Droud and, and um, you know, Barry Booker, Barry Goheen, uh, that, you know, Reed and, and um, what, what's the big fella? Uh, you know, the, you knew well, there, was, there was Fred Benjamin. Yeah, uh, yeah, Will, absolutely. Will Purdue, Frank Cornette. Will Purdue. Uh, Derek Wilcox. I mean, I could go on and on and on. Yep. Yeah, no, that was uh, that was a good era of Vanderbilt basketball. And of course, I, you know, I got I got to play with Scott Drowd a lot. And for whatever reason, uh, uh, he and I played on several teams together. And man, you know, that guy was uh, he, he could shoot the basketball for he could fill it up, couldn't he? Yes, he could. He sure yeah. could. And I think his his son has has broken some of his records back at home. Uh, is that I, right? I think that's right. Or he's at least a record setter. I don't know if they're Scott's yeah. records, but uh, Joel, yeah. we've got just a couple of more minutes and I sure. appreciate you taking through some great, great memories. I want to go back to Surratt and, and Rand Hall, that area. Um, there was a movie theater in there. There was yeah. uh, some study rooms. Yeah. I think they called them. Do you remember yep. the big, huge oversized baseball glove chair? Matter of fact, I, I was going to bring that up. I'm glad you absolutely. That was a fixture. I don't. I, I honestly it's don't know if I ever sat in it, here. <laughs> it is still there. Is it I, really? I I made the mistake. Well, let's be honest. I did this on purpose. I fell asleep in that chair many times trying to to, to read. But who yeah. who you couldn't really do a whole lot of reading. It was, it was more of a social area. Yeah, uh, exactly. But we, for those of you who didn't know, we didn't have a dedicated dining hall back in the day, certainly not at McGugan. So yeah. we had a few places on campus where we yeah. would eat. And we also got those dreaded Sunday uh, food vouchers where yes. you would go to Mr. Gaddy's Pizza or Fuddruckers or- Fuddruckers, Pizza. yeah. Yeah. That's right. I, you know, I forgot about that. And I did get to that last year I was there you know, McGugan and the, and the food services and, and uh, some of the, th- I know they did some great things over there. Uh, that I got to experience that for a year. That was incredible because yeah. not only, you know, you didn't have to make your way to other places on campus. It was right there after you practiced or lifted or had team meetings, you were right into the, to the dining hall. That was uh, uh, very nice for sure. First yeah. class. And, and Dwayne brings up, how can you forget the roles at the cooker? Yeah. Um, oh, well, first of all, uh, I think it was somebody else you had, you had talked with a, a while back talked about their favorite place to eat for. So, Cooker absolutely was my parents. It was a it was a given after the game when they came to watch. Uh, as many of the guys that we I could I could get to go with us, we were going there. That's what we were going to do. Uh, still to this day, one of my favorite places ever. Yeah. Yeah, and I I was sad to learn recently that Rotiers is just now closing, and it had yeah. been behind that Eckerd's Drugs across the yeah. street for decades and decades. Had many too many uh, burgers on French bun. Uh, oh, over yeah. the years for me and even oh, yeah. I haven't been there in the last couple of years but uh yeah phenomenal place for sure one, one last place is long gone remember the steak and egg that oh yeah a, yeah yeah you know I, I have an interesting story there well it's not that interesting but uh you remember the uh 
what was the white boxer that fought Leon Spinks? Um, do you remember? Jerry, uh, uh, Jerry Clooney? No, Jerry Clooney? Clooney? You're on it. It's close. Not, not Clooney. Jerry. Uh, he was also an actor. Um, many Somebody, nights. Dwayne he May. was in that place. Many nights. Oh, yeah. I didn't know yes. that. So that's yes. funny. That's yeah. funny. And then after, when I was in my master's program, I would uh, I, I was doing some personal training over at Baptist Hospital in their fitness center, and he would he was there as well, uh, training. Oh, so very cool, very cool. Well, Joel, the, the last thing that that I want to bring up is with you having athletes is for kids, this current generation of of athletes. Sure. You know, again, this is where we're putting on the old guy hats. Back in our day, we didn't whatever. The current athlete is so different just because they are bigger, better, faster, stronger. But I yeah. think it's a different mindset for a lot of these kids. And I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying it's, it's different, it's different times. What do you see? I'm not asking you to, to talk about your son specifically, but with being around travel families and, and, and other athletes, the, the current athlete is, is in their phone all the time, most of them. And that, that, I don't know, that used to drive me nuts, but I know it's part of the modern mindset. What do you see that you like about the, the modern younger athlete? Uh, I think, you know, if I were to say like and dislike, I like the fact that they're able to see, um, you know, from a training, from a nutrition, from a, um, you know, the better ways, the better players, you know, you see all these great things. But with that comes a lot of baggage and a lot of time you know, a lot of time spent impersonally on a phone. Uh, and it's, and you know, we try to balance that. It's, you know, I, I will, let me just first say that back to your original question on during while on campus, I'm so glad that phones weren't, especially <laughs> with the cameras and the video available back in the late eighties. Now people would say, well, what did you do, Joel? It's not that I did anything bad. I'm just glad they weren't available. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, today, these kids, you could, uh, you could be, everything they do is under under a microscope. Well, that's what I was going to say. Those those terribly fun steroid parties at Carmichael Towers, there wasn't anything extraordinarily bad going on. It was just kids being kids, blowing yeah. off some steam, having a little drink, just ha dancing, hanging yeah. out, just being yeah. goofy. Yeah. And, and frankly, if you had cameras back in that day, I don't know, you know, it, you'd be a little more on guard, I think. Yeah, I truly yeah. do. I think it's it's just such a different time and they have to be aware. Um, there's so many great things about technology. I mean, we talk about some of the things that I do professionally and 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 all the developments in, in, in tech that have happened. Um, but again, I think it's, it's uh, as parents, it's our responsibility to help them be mindful of its place and it, it doesn't replace interpersonal relationships. And, and that's what I'm, I, I really feel for this. I, I've got a group of 16 year olds that are on this, this travel soccer team that I've been managing for four or five years. And, you know, we try best as possible to pull those, not to take them away from them, but remind them to be present where you are, mm -hmm. be where you are, be with these kids and these other teammates. Cause yeah. It can be taken away like that, and and uh, and you'll miss that time. Um, be but present. again, they're great for a lot of reasons. I, I've heard many times, be present where your feet are. Yeah, yeah, Mentally. I love it. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. I, I, one one thing I didn't get the chance to mention. I, I you know, um, I, when I was in my master's degree, I, I didn't really know what I wanted to do, and uh, I was getting a master's degree of counseling from from Peabody. And I had the opportunity to talk with Christy Hauck. Uh, and Christy doesn't know this. I've never told him this, uh, but I did see his interviews. And, and um, he, he pulled me aside. He said, you know what, Joel? He said, you need to get some sales experience. He said, in life, you're going to have to sell yourself a service or a product. And I was like, you know what? That's pretty darn good advice. And so uh, for me personally, that resonated and, and put me on a path of you know 20 plus years of sales. So uh, I do it. Brad. He probably doesn't even remember saying it. But anyway. Knowing Christy and knowing he'll see this, I bet he'll he'll remember. Yeah, I, I bet he. Yeah. Will. I bet well, he will. I do appreciate it. I need to. I, for years, I felt like I needed to reach out to him. So um, hopefully, I get the opportunity to do that. From, from one Commodore to another Commodore. That's yes, awesome. sir.
Well, Joel, this conversation has been awesome. And I, I want to yeah. thank you for reconnecting, for sharing yeah. some of your story, for just being so raw about it and just sharing all of those, those life lessons that are so important to us. So yeah. thank you. Well, I appreciate your commitment to doing this. I think you've You've serviced our community uh, of Vanderbilt, former Vanderbilt football players very well. And uh, I appreciate the time and effort you put into it. Thank you, brother. Well, that's, I appreciate it. But as I say each week, the pleasure is right here because I get to reconnect yeah. with old teammates, new teammates, and everybody in between. And yeah. uh, guys, as we do each Tuesday now, not Thursdays, but Tuesdays, conversations with Commodores, we got a bunch of great ones lined up just like Joel tonight. So please keep coming back. Those comments are awesome. Your input's awesome. If you have photos, videos, memorabilia, anything you want to share with the group, either send it to me or put it in the group so everybody can see it. Hope you guys have a great rest of your night. Anchor down. Thank you, Bernard. Take care. Thank you.